Folks, welcome to another video from the Man Made Handmade channel. This video is all about pneumatics. Now, I'm no expert, but I've learned a lot of things along the way which I'd like to share with you. Now, there's plenty of uses for pneumatics. In some of the other videos in this channel, you'll see us exploring those uses. In this video, we'll go through the different components of a pneumatic system, including the cylinders, the fittings, the tubing, and the valves. That being said, relax. I hope you enjoy the video. Roll the tape. Okay guys, let's get straight into it. Now with a cylinder, there's two sizes that are important. One is the bore, which is how much power the cylinder can give you, and also the stroke, which is the length of the distance that power can be pushed forward. We've got a selection of cylinders here to show you. Uh, first one, 32 mil or one and a quarter inch bore. It also throws 200 mil or eight inches. Stepping up a notch, we have the 50 mil or two inch bore by 200 mil or eight inches uh, here as well. And then we have the big bore. Yeah, this is quite a unique cylinder. This is a 80 mil bore by only a 50 mil stroke. 80 millimeter bore or three and one eighth inch. This will push nearly 700 kilos. So this is uh, this is quite a sh quite a strong bit of kit. Best way to get them. One word eBay. Okay, so I'm always hunting on eBay looking for cylinders and second hand and fund is that you pay a fraction of the price and often you can get some really good deals. So good example, this one here, this cylinder, I got nine of them, nine of these cylinders here and I got them at £10 each. £10 each which is about $13. Uh, great price, great price. I'll always be able to use them, I can work them into different projects, they're a good uh, strength, good power and also a good stroke as well what I can use. Okay so how do we fix these cylinders into our projects? So on, on the back of most cylinders you have four fixing nuts here. But we've also got them front and back and that's true of most of them. We've got front and back as well. Now some of the cylinders you get, you get them uh, you get them like this which simply is just a, a thread at a thread small thread at the front which is this thread is m16 with a locking nut so all we need to do is drill a 16 mil hole into some plate pop this through locking nut on the back and that's solid and this can be used something what's quite interesting what you need to look out for is that the the fixing on the ends of the plungers these are fine threads i got caught out with this once fine nuts or locking nuts uh, to use the the threads on here so what do we install on the end? Well, you can install clevis pins like this one, purchased again from eBay at a, a reasonable price. But you can also make them as well quite easily out of box section. So, for example, here, here's one I've made. This is an M20 thread on the top of this cylinder with a locking nut. And uh, I've just simply made a hinge with a pin and a bracket just out of some box section. And this will do for the project that I've used this this cylinder for. Let's move on to the valves in order to control these cylinders. Here we have three different types of valves for you to look at. So we have a five part three position valve and we have two five part two position valves. So two position valves first, we have a lever here which can take two positions, either forwards or backwards. Now, depending on the position of the lever, air will come in through this part here and come out of here to one side of the cylinder and this valve will exhaust the air from the opposite side of that cylinder. If we move the lever the other way, air will come in here, it will then go to the opposite side of the cylinder and exhaust the other side through this part here. This is a five part two way valve but it will operate a bit differently, it hasn't got a lever, it's got a solenoid which is connected to a cable. So when there's 230 volts down this cable that will mean that the, the, the valve is in one position which will send air down uh, one way and when there's no voltage down the solenoid it will send air down the other way so they operate in exactly the same way uh, one is with a manual lever one is via a solenoid okay so the third type of valve we have a five port three-way valve now the reason this is a three-way valve is that the lever springs back to the middle this this valve is particularly useful for operating say pneumatic arms or digger arms and the reason that reason for that is when you push it the arm will move 
and then when you let go the, the valve locks which means that the cylinder stays in the same position that you left it in which is really important for certain certain applications let's move on to the tubing that we use to transport the air from these components tubing not much to say about tubing uh, the size that it comes in particularly in, in Europe is uh, 4 mil, 6 mil, 8 mil, 10 mil and 12 mil. Apologies to those in the US. I'm not certain of the imperial sizes for pneumatic tubing. Okay, it comes in different colours. I've got uh, three, three different examples here. I've got some black 6 mil uh, pneumatic tubing, some blue as well, and I've also got some red 8 mil pneumatic tubing, which mainly I use for running uh, air throughout my workshop. Let's move on to the fittings that we use to connect the tube to the other components. Fittings. So here we have a valve and a cylinder and we'd need to connect them together in order for them to work. So how do we do that? Now, on every valve and every cylinder, there are threaded holes and this allows us to thread in some fittings. So for example, this is a quarter inch BSP thread and we use a quarter inch BSP male stud fitting and they can screw in like this. Get some push fit pipe and push that pipe into that, into that fitting there. This allows us to connect the pipe together between the valve and the cylinder. Now, there's a variety of port sizes found on valves and cylinders. The, uh, the bigger the cylinder, the bigger the, the port size. So the typical sizes that you will find on cylinders and valves are uh, 1 8 inch um, BSP, a quarter inch BSP, uh, 3 8 inch BSP as well. All of which the size as you can see here. Now it's important to note that uh, these fittings should be used with uh, thread sealing tape, so PTFE tape or Teflon tape, which is wrapped around the threads before they insert inserted into the ports and that will create an airtight seal. That's a brief description of the fittings that you will find. We will move on now to the uh, mock-up or the rig-up of the equipment to show how all this connects together and how it all works. Here we are over at the welding table and we've got the first valve set up. This is the two position five way valve. So let's activate the lever. And back. Okay folks, notice that this valve only allows us to be fully extended. And fully retracted. Now we're going to talk a little bit about speed control. This cylinder is fitted with two speed control valves, one at the back of the plunger and one at the front, and these allow us to change the speed at which the plunger moves in and out. So now it moves out really quickly, and if we just turn this valve down, move slower, we turn it down some more, move slower again. Now let's take a look at the three position five way valve. Let's see it in action. So notice how the lever springs back to the middle position the plunger is stationary. Let's take a look at the solenoid valve. Last valve, we have the solenoid valve, which is operated by 230 volts. You see it's connected to the same cylinder here. So let's turn the voltage off to the solenoid valve. The cylinder fully extends and we turn the voltage back on to the valve. The cylinder fully retracts. And again, folks, that's the end of the video. If you've liked what you've seen, hit that subscribe button, like, comment, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.